Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, we're going to go over 13 more WWE releases. The wrestling world reacts to the WWE releases. We've got the reasons and some extra context behind some of these releases. And is Vince McMahon hinting at a WWE departure? I'm Adam Wilborn. Oh, I hope so. I'm Andy Murray. And this... It's the news. The H stands for, hey, get the hell out of here, man. Uh, let's <laughs> kick this one off by talking about some more WWE releases Oof. that we haven't covered on the channel yet. Yesterday, myself and Michael Sidgwick, who I erroneously called Phil in my second video, sorry guys, <laughs> uh, we covered Mustafa Ali's release in its individual video, then I jumped on camera last night and covered the other releases that came out yesterday, Dolph Ziggler, Shelton Benjamin, bunch of names. Since we made that video, there's been a bunch more. Mm -hmm. Fightful, confirming, after our second video came out, Dana Brooke, Massey, and Mansoir, oh. the maximum male models. And Dana Brooke gone from WWE, um, PW Insider adding Daba Kato, Ika Manjiro, Uly Ulyssa Leon, and Shanky to that list as well. Uh, and five performance center talents yeah. have confirmed, and the most, like, on level up, Quincy was on NXT for a little Briefly, bit as well. Yeah. Um, Quincy Elliott, Bryson Montana, Daniel MacArthur, Kevin Cortez, uh, Alexis Gray, and Brooklyn Barlow, six people, sorry. Uh, they've all confirmed their departures from WWE on social media. Mm -hmm. um, like a lot of these stuff, like WWE doesn't really announce these things anymore. So it's either on reporters to find out about it. And to their credit, most reporters won't report this stuff until like the wrestlers have been informed. Uh, they're not assholes, basically. Yeah. Um, so it's either on reporters to dig this stuff up or for people to announce it themselves on social media. Um, but yeah, that's that's the latest updated list. Uh, we What we'll do, we'll jump into some of these reactions. We'll go over some of the other reports, my second story, and then we'll talk about it a bit more. Yeah, that's out. fair. Yeah, because obviously, like you say, the, the announcements, it was the, 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 the trickle started with Mustafa Ali and we all thought, uh oh, there was a there was a, a glimmer of hope that maybe just Mustafa Ali had asterisk release as he'd done previously and been granted it, and then the floodgates opened. And it, days like this are always horrible. Um, you know, whether or not you like the wrestlers or whatever, anyone losing their job just sucks. Yeah. Um, and especially bad if you've worked with these people and you're good friends with them. Loads of people across the wrestling world reacted to it. The likes of uh, The Rock. Big E, CJ Perry, John Cena, Sean Spears, Swerve Strickland, Renee Paquette, lots of lovely stuff being said about people like Dolph Ziggler in particular. Um, Kurt Angle did a lovely tweet about Shelton Benjamin, writing, Team Angle forever, thank you Shelton for the memories, you're truly a badass. Uh, Austin Creed, Xavier Woods, uh, tweeted about Dolph Ziggler, the crowd reactions to Ziggler becoming champion were some of the craziest that I've ever heard. Yeah, I rewatched that last night, it was awesome. Uh, one of my favourite guys to watch work, and one of the guys who showed me the importance of having something else that you're passionate about, thank you. Thank you, Dolph. I also want to mention Matt Cardona's mm. tweet because I think uh, it was, several others tweeted similar sentiments to this, but I think it's very applicable uh, to the wrestlers who've been released and it's a, a, a much needed, you know, bit of encouragement rather than just being down and out about all this. Matt Cardona tweeted, to those who are just released, this can be the end of your career or it can be the beginning. Look yourself in the mirror and decide. I promise you the work and the money is out there. It's not easy, it's a grind, it's a hustle, it's frustrating, but it can be incredibly rewarding in more ways than one if you work your flipping, he didn't say flipping, ass off. I hope to see a lot of you down the road. Exactly, um, you know, I think you and I would, would hope that uh, many others, many of these people who've been released get picked up by the likes of AEW or Impact or like Matt Cardona did and he's proven how successful that can be, mm. just go and work at all of the indies <laughs> and uh, really re-establish your name for yourselves. I hope for many of these people that have, have been released, this isn't the end. Sometimes, look at a Drew McIntyre. This could be the, the perfect kick up the arse that you need, but I'd never campaign for something like this. No, of no, of course. Uh, Cardona's one's uh, uh, like a response I'm particularly drawn to. Yeah. Uh, and he's obviously spe speaking to his experiences and he's done incredible work. So you'd hope that other people uh, are able to, to accomplish similar things. Mm -hmm. Let's go over some of the context behind these releases. Uh, a couple of reports here from Fightful Select to go over. Mustafa Ali. He was bound to a WWE contract that the sources believe was expiring in spring or summer next year. Of course, he asked for his release in 2021. Yeah. Uh, he wanted out of the company at that point. People in NXT had no knowledge of his impending release, uh, and it's noted that he that he'd actually uh, worked through an injury to, to make this oh, thing wow. happen. wow. So it's like, oh man, that's a complicated situation because on one hand, like at one point, he didn't want to be there, and he was like, you know what, I'm, I want to do this. Make the best of it, yeah. Yeah, 
good guy by all accounts yeah. as well. Elias hadn't been on TV since May, but he'd been pitching ideas with WWE up to a month ago. Riddick Moss, he's been described as a bit of a Paul Heyman guy. Heyman was a big fan of him when he was running SmackDown, mm -hmm. and he thought that he could raise Moss into like a main event level. Yeah, great fire up spots, I always like that. Really explosive guy, really athletic guy, good looking guy as well. Hell yeah. You should go at Noah and join the GLG, baby. <laughs> good looking guys. Um, that's an actual stable, it's, yeah. fun. it's funny. Uh, they're all good looking guys as well, makes sense. Other people weren't as confident in that with Moss, and that's why he didn't end up getting beat, yeah. um, apparently, according to this report. In a separate report, Fightful noted that Ziggler's contract was set to extend until next summer. At one point, he had wanted to leave the company a few years ago, but he got talked into staying. So it's entirely possible that Dolph Ziggler is not upset about being cut at all. Yeah. Who knows? We'll find out at some point, I'm His sure. great interview with Chris Van Vliet a while back, I saw people sharing. Go and check that out. Just yeah. on top load, Dolph Ziggler. Uh, and Aaliyah, unfortunately, didn't come as a surprise to people. People in WWE actually expected her name to be on the list. Mm -hmm. That's primarily because they hadn't used her in over a year. Uh, she got injured last year, of course, after losing uh, the, the Women's Tag Team Championships with Raquel Rodriguez, and then she just hadn't been factored into plans. She was barely brought to TV after recovering or anything like that. So that one didn't catch a few people by, didn't catch anyone by surprise, but it's a shame nonetheless. Like, people, it's people losing their jobs. Yeah. Um, I think I've said most of what I want to say about these releases on the previous videos, to be perfectly honest with you. I think it, it sucks that, that people have lost their job. I think like the, the, obviously the optics of it are horrendous on the day when you've, you've announced a new $1.4 yeah. billion dollar TV deal. And Emma's, Trimming the fat, what? I know, it's like, Jesus. You, I, I, and the Emma thing's really rough because she's tweeting about how excited she is. But she WWE took that really Australia. well, yeah. She did, and then she quote tweeted it and she was like, oh, never mind, been fired. Wow. Um, it's nice to see people like uh, the Maximum Male Models jumping on a three hour Twitch stream yes. and having a laugh uh, and making the most of it already. I think they'll do great stuff. Yeah, I mean, they're too funny not to be something somewhere. Even if they just stream for a living, they'll be great yeah. at that. They're just funny people. Um, so yeah, it sucks big time for the for the employees and the, the staff who've lost their job. Hope they all land on their feet. Hate seeing responses like, oh, well, you know, WWE needs to cut costs. And it's like, stop simping for a billion yeah. dollar corporation. Think of it, people. It's like when people celebrate when people get big TV deals. Like, you're not getting any money from this. Yeah, you... Great that they're on telly, obviously. But yeah, I, I think like the Ziggler one was obviously surprising. He's a former world champion and he just felt like a lifer there. Like he felt like someone that they might even just say, uh, Dolph, we don't really want you to wrestle more, but you know, you're, he's got a great wrestling brain. Do you want to transition into a producer role or whatever? Some of these people have a bump. Like I love yeah. the fact that uh, <laughs> like, uh, they previously, they were like, we haven't really got a lot for you. Do you want to do a kick-ass feud with Bron Breaker down in NXT? That was awesome a yeah, while back. Yeah, it's like, all right, no worries. But Ali, yeah, was a real shock because like, yeah, apart from the fact he's previously asked for his release, um, he's booked on next weekend's pay-per-view. Yeah. He was going to face Dirty Dom for the NXT North American Championship. And he was on... NXT talking about the fact that Dragon Lee's gone ahead of him in the pecking order for the wild stuff. Um, yeah, I, it, we, this has happened so often now and uh, an, an advance warning for another morale story set, a sense coming your way very soon because let alone the, the, you know, the backstage stuff that we reported on a while back now with people losing their mates from the locker room is only going to get worse, you sense. Um, we say it happens so often now. I feel like this should just be a staple thing that we say, but like if you're a fan of these wrestlers, you know, yes, they've got like a 90 day no compete and they, they, they've been taken care of up to that point. But beyond that, who knows? We'd like to see them work for an AEW and Impact and MLW indie promotions across the country, etc., etc. But opportunities are, are limited. It's not just an endless, uh, you know, world out there for wrestlers. Yeah. So if you're a fan of these people or you just want to support them, I'm sure that they will have stuff on their social medias that you can go and buy or like you say go and follow them and watch them on twitch or whatever it may be go and support them because out of nowhere these guys have just lost their jobs exactly follow Dolph Ziggler's example when he, when the pandemic hit, yes he quietly bought a bunch of merch loads of merch from indie wrestlers and other people who might be struggling it's a good example to set um and again like just to summarize it's complete bs that you can sign a four-year contract with a company and get cut one year into it with like no consequences for them Independent contract, contractor status is complete bollocks. Yeah. And it needs to change. It never will, but it does need to. Now, like I said, Andy, I would never sit here and campaign for someone's WWE departure. I would campaign for Vince's. Unless it's Vince McMahon, yeah. yeah he's um, a billionaire. Because <laughs> uh, a really intriguing report came out yesterday, cur courtesy of Axios. Um, he's wrestling in uh, NXT these days, isn't he? <laughs> 
What's he doing on That's the news? Axiom. <laughs> uh, Vince McMahon hinting that he could exit WWE. Uh, the report from Axios notes that Vince McMahon shares with TKO Holdings Group, of course, that's the group that now looks after or uh, Tony runs. Khan's ownership. Yeah, runs UFC and WWE under the, under the Endeavor banner. Uh, his shares are valued at around £3 billion and they are registered for sale uh, so he can avoid a lockup period standing with other TKO hold, uh, stockholders, including parent company Endeavor. Now, neither McMahon nor TKO is commenting on the situation. Um, Axios notes that the situation gives McMahon and TKO flexibility, although a recent SEC fi filing indicates that Vince and two other TKO executives will be selling stockholders in this offering. I'll just read what they said here. <laughs> McMahon's membership of our board could expose us to negative publicity. Mm -hmm and or have other adverse financial and operational impacts on our business. His membership also may result in additional scrutiny or otherwise exacerbate the other risks described herein. Any of these outcomes could directly or indirectly have ad ad adverse financial and operational impacts on our business. Um, yeah, three billion dollars of shares. I wouldn't hold your breath on him completely disappearing from the company, but Elon Musk, you've been a real arsehole recently. It's not X, it's Twitter. <laughs> it's Never mind this fight with Zuckerberg. Yeah, to use a tweet that I've seen quite a lot recently, Elon Musk could do something really funny here. <laughs> Buy him out of his shares, and suddenly people are like, hey, Elon, you are right. Oh no. <laughs> well, the, the great accomplishment of Elon Musk in 2023 has uh, been making Mark Zuckerberg seem like a normal human being. <laughs> yeah. It's a remarkable like accomplishment. I want to hire that girl to stand next to Meg in front of the guy. That's That's as his dip right. fans would say, masterful gambit, sir. God. <laughs> masterful, I forgot that. Masterful gambit, genius chess play, sir. Well like, played. Yeah, like, like he's going to recruit them. Um, yeah, so this is completely hypothetical, this yes. Vince story. Yeah. Probably doesn't lead to anything, but we thought we'd put it in here as just a bit of hope for people who are pissed off. Yeah, I saw Sean Ross Sapp on Twitter last night, sort of people going, oh my God, is he going? And he was like, it's completely hypothetical, it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. Sorry to piss on your bonfire. It is pretty interesting that in the old SEC filing, like, oh yeah, this guy could be bad publicity. I love that. Was it Ari Emanuel? He's like, God, what a top bloke Vince McMahon is. Love Whilst it. everyone within TK was like, yeah, he's a bad dude and uh, he makes us look really bad. Yeah. Also, he increasingly looks like a bloody waxwork. Like, every that new picture, photo man. I see of Vince, man, it looks like if you left him out in the sun for two minutes, he'd melt. <laughs> he'd become a puddle of goo. Yeah, you don't have to be nice about Vince McMahon. No. Like, let's let's stop that. Yeah, and uh, we'll update you on things that happen with this as and when they happen, but I, I wouldn't hold your breath on this, but let us know your thoughts on, on all the stories we've discussed in the comments section below. We're gonna move on to the Twitter questions now. Um, uh, we've picked some stuff that aren't related to the releases to try and just lighten the mood somewhat. Uh, and we start off with a question from Daniel Lopez who says, what up my dudes, what up Dan? Uh, so in your opinion, hope uh, it's on better matches. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, it's on better matches. Pe who's better at having better matches basically? People okay. who are legitimate best friends or people who legitimately hate each other? I think people who are best friends generally. Yes. Like you've got fewer, fewer examples. Uh, and there are examples throughout history of people who don't like each other but having a really intense, great wrestling yeah. match. Can happen. But I think for the most part, if you're on the same page and you want to be fully cooperative and you're like, you just come up with ideas. You you brainstorm with people better when you get on with them and when yeah. you have camaraderie. Yeah. And, and that, that's what a wrestling match is. It's a performance. Um, it's a pantomime. And I, I think that that is a safer and more consistent recipe. Yeah, I think, you know, at the end of the day, if Andy, oh, if Andy and I were fighting, for example, and we didn't like each other, and Andy was going over, I'd be like, why would I make you look good yeah, in yeah. the victory then? And, oh, but if we were friends, you'd want to do that. Mm -hmm. And also, the other point that people often make is like, if you really want to make it look good and snug, I'd feel more comfortable doing that with a friend. Not that I'd ever do this, I'm pathetic. But uh, it'd look good like that. And if there was like a stray shot, like, I'm thinking for some reason Brock Lesnar, Braun Strowman, for yep. example. You wouldn't, you, if it was a friend, you'd be like, oh, sorry, mate. sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, don't worry about it. Whereas it, it'd be like, oh, you're getting your receipt. And I watched a recent video from Maven on receipts. Great, go and check out Maven's YouTube channel, it's awesome. And uh, yeah, they, they don't play about these boys. No, big boys. So yeah, as much as you'd think, well, if they dislike each other, surely that, the, the reality of it feeds really nicely into the, it really nicely into the story. Yeah. Santana Ortiz, for example, but I do think sometimes the work is beneficial when it's two people who are just like, 100%. He actually really like each other, but yeah. we're gonna oh, bloody hate you. Uh, poke, 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 1D. Okay. 
Right, so with the TKO merger being complete, do you see a WWE X UFC Super Show at least once? I see it literally zero times. Uh, literally no times in history. I don't like. I'm I'm very confident in that. Uh, I think like Nick Khan's talking about like big weekends where you have like SmackDown a UFC show a WWE show and then into Raw on the Monday over four days. I could see that. Yeah, for sure. But as far as like a combined show goes. Nah, I think wrestling fans generally are a bit more open to like consuming UFC stuff. Like, yeah, absolutely, a bit more open-minded towards it. I think if you're a hardcore UFC fan, you have a higher chance of thinking that wrestling is fake BS. Yeah, uh, and and just pantomime nonsense that you don't want to watch. I think it'd be too hard to sell. I don't think the fan crossover. Uh, I think it's a one-way fan crossover for mm -hmm. the most part, and I don't think it would do well. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see, you know, Roman versus Cody on the same card as Leon Edwards versus Colby Covington, for example. I don't want to see Colby Covington ever. Well, yeah, good point. Uh, but it just, yeah, I mean, you think people go for a piss break in certain matches when you're watching wrestling. The UFC fans would be like, right, that's the UFC fight over. Let's go to the bar or just leave because the fake wrestling's going on or whatever. I'd love to see it. It just wouldn't work. You're also, right. can you imagine being a wrestling fan and sitting through, this is an old example, but sitting through five rounds, 25 minutes of John Fitch hugging people on the ground. It'd be the most boring thing in the world. You want to see Ricochet doing flips. Another thing, and fundamental to all of this, is that MMA is real and wrestling is fake. And if you put the two things on the same, it's not fake, it's scripted. And yes. If you put the two things on the same card, it completely exposes pro wrestling. So yeah. To me, it's it cannot happen. Yeah. Perfect example was the... Shayna Ronda thing where it's like, ooh, the blurring lines. I was like, no, it just doesn't work. It yeah. doesn't work. Doesn't work. But I would love to see Sage in the crowd with just bleed going, ah! <laughs> Hulking up with all yeah. his muscles. <laughs> Final question today comes from Jonesy Jones 74. Jonesy Jones, Joe, Joe, Joe. Jo, a lot jo. of questions around this topic. We'll probably talk about them more going forward because it's not going to happen, I don't think, anytime soon, but we'll see. It's all about Jay Cargill and her debut within WWE. Very excited about mm. this. Jonesy Jones writes, Hello, gents. How do you guys feel about Jay Cargill debuting at Survivor Series such as other greats? Mm. I like that as a pitch. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I think I want to go down the surprise debut route with Jay. I, I don't think I want to do the whole, you know, like the nudge, nudge, wink, wink stuff. I think that worked uh, when AEW did it with Punk, obviously. Yeah. It worked when uh, WWE did it with Bray, when they had the, the they obviously had the QR codes. Yeah, that was awesome. But I think for Jade, it just makes sense to like pull her out of nowhere um, because like I love Jade Cargo, but she's not as big a name as those people. So like the level of excitement you can generate from the nudge, nudge, wing, wing stuff isn't quite as effective. So for me, I'm pulling her completely out of nowhere because when Jade Cargo shows up with that presence and that mm. aura, immediately you go, that is a person I need to pay attention and to. And I think it helps with the legacy of Survivor Series debuts. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, bloody hell, that must be a big spot for them. Um, tell me that Jade is the new Undertaker, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. That's Blue Chipper right there. <laughs> I do, I, I just, the moment I read that though, I did think like, yeah, if you have like a heel team on, on War Games, right? With, you know, your Rhea Ripley's, your uh, <laughs> Damage Katarals, maybe, Nia Jax. And the babyface team, maybe you do the classic thing that they've done a lot recently of like, here's the babyface team. And there's like, that guy, one of them's kind of a, of a weak link. Oh no, it's 10 minutes before the match and they've been taken out backstage. Who could possibly replace them? Or maybe because that's a bit weird because then why would you have this person on reserve? But there's a gap in the yes. babyface Survivor Series team and they're not there. They're not in the little war games cell thing. They yeah. just you know, like, and I, you're not going to get quite the same pop but I'd aim for the three, two, one, nothing. And then the, the heels perfectly done by Undisputed Era when Kevin Owens did it in War Games in 2019. Michael Havlock, I believe, was there for that. The whole, ha, 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 they've got no one. Oh, bollocks, they've got Jade Cargill. Yeah. That's what I want to see. God, I'm so excited for a debut within WWE. I would quite like Roman winning the title style angle where he didn't enter the match until right at the very end. I would quite like Team is entering with four people against five. Maybe, maybe someone gets injured in the build, injured in the build, right? Like on Raw the week before, and they're like, "Oh no, we haven't got a person. What are we gonna do?" But then the babyface team captain's like, uh, "Wait and see, wait and see." Yeah. And we get to the end of the match. 
Who's gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Jade comes down. She wrestles for like two minutes. She pins like four people. Yeah. Uh, it was war games. You don't pin four people, but you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, she just kicks everyone ass. And, and ass. just in a in a pure admin side of things, it's a good time of year. Like if she debuted now, you'd just be like, you're spinning your wheels right now, aren't you? If she debuted, debuted at Survivor Series, you've got a month to kill of just her squashing people, and then you suddenly Royal Rumble, up oh, road to WrestleMania, it's right there. Here's and have her be huge in the Royal Rumble. Not saying she'd win it. Yeah. Who do I want to win it in the women's? Do I want Bianca Belair to like start tying Stone Cold's record? Maybe. Oh, yeah. I, cut, I cut the outro a little early there, but Sorry. here's the video. This one's done. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>